Hello everyone, it's blog time and today it's another mini blog so I'm going to keep it as short as possible. Six cool Mixbus tips. Um, these are six cool things that you can do in Harrison Mixbus version 3 and uh, I think you can do most of them, uh, if not all of them, in Mixbus 32C which is its like sister workstation. Um, it's basically the same but it has a different mixer um, based on the 32C surprisingly. Um, so yeah. Um, if you're not a Mixbus user, this might interest you. You might be able to, you know, look at whether your DAW can do these things and whether they would be useful to you. Um, or you might be interested in having a look at Mixbus. Or, you know, if you are a Mixbus user, hopefully this might give you some extra tips. Um, so the thing with Mixbus is, I think people ask me why I use it, and I'm using it for most of my mixing now. Um, I think it gives me the sound that I want when I mix in the box and when I mix on my console, it gives me all the tools that I want. So let's have a little delve into some of those tools. Uh, first up, number one, uh, polarity optimization. So I press R and I select a little bit of drums here. I right click and say optimize polarity and Mixbus does a load of sums. It's basically using um, six different algorithms to work out which settings on the phase flip for each of these channels would be the most appropriate and will give me the most overall gain. Um, what does that mean? Well, usually it means that as little as possible phase cancellation. And there's thousands of, when you get to sort of 16 tracks of drums or whatever, you know, there can be thousands of possibilities. So this can really save you some time and effort. So this is the this is the polarity optimization results anyway. And it's suggesting we can get two and a half decibels extra if I flip kick 112, so that's a D112, and um, snare 57, if we can flip those. So this isn't just an advisory. Um, it's using different methods to, to calculate these results, but they're pretty much the same in most cases. Uh, not normalized, peak normalized. RMS normalized and low emphasis versions of those. Here's another one which is suggesting flipping this kick sample. So I go over to the mixer window and I slide over and we can see as I click through these options the phase flip is automatically engaged. Now that will run whilst I'm running audio. I won't run audio at the moment for you, just for the demonstration. Um, you pick your favourite and, you know, use that as a good start point and then maybe go in and tweak a few more phase flip options. Um, if you want to, if you want to have some destructive um, phase cancellation, which might be the sound you're after. So, you know, that could be the case for uh, multiple mics on a guitar cab or... Uh, you know, DI and bass DI, um, uh, DI and a mic on a bass cab. Um, so yeah, it's really useful for static sources with static, multiple static microphones. So that is number one phase uh, optimization, polarity optimization. Number two, direct outputs. Yeah, so Mixbus has these direct outputs, just like a real console, and they're almost as useful as, you know, what you would have on a real console. Um, I've got this track here. Um, the channel has uh, Poulin's uh, Le Cab, which is a, an impulse response loader. It's a free one as well. Um, yeah, so uh, this is an impulse response loader. I've got some guitar DI recorded out of an amplifier. Um, and I just want to make sure I've got a print of that so, you know, I can send that on to someone to do some recording alongside. Or, you know, if someone was sending it to me, I would ask for a direct guitar signal if they've got one and a version with their you know amp simulator processing on if they're using an amp simulator so i know exactly what they were hearing and i can see if it needs to be reamped or augmented or whatever so you just click at the bottom and all the possible inputs come up and i've chosen print guitar one in i could also pick the routing grid which gives me basically the same options but in a nice little grid mode um, you know, if I was reamping this, I could click 7, which is where I've got my reamp plugged in at the moment. That is the direct outs, and it's great for printing, it's great for routing, endless possibilities. <laughs> Plug in order, right. It is mind-boggling how badly 
some DAWs deal with plug-in order. When you've got a set of slots and you have to move plugins around as if you were playing one of those little tile games or some kind of Lego game, then, you know, it's just annoying. It's really annoying. And it's really slow. So Mixbus has conquered this um, just by, you know, having plugins that you can slide around. But these aren't exactly plugins. This is a plugin at the top here. This is... Um, uh, expander gate, I should say. Um, but we've got EQ, compression, and fader, and these are actually components of the channel. So when you bring a new track up in Mixbus, a new channel will appear in the mixer, and you can, you know, mix away. Uh, basically, there's um, a parametric three band EQ with a high pass filter. Um, there's a compressor with a variety of compression options you know you can choose a leveler compressor or limiter um you've got makeup gain you've got threshold you've got ratio and there's a fader but each of those components become like little plugins so you can move the fader up you can have the fader running into a compressor or the compressor you know you can put a plug in there of your choice um you could run over to the favorite section and drag in your favourite, I don't know, your favourite flanger if you wanted. You know, we could go crazy. So that's plug-in order, and I'll show you a cool little tip while we're here. If you right-click and say, new external send, this gives you the option of making a send. Now, you could use that for headphone mixes. You could use that for ooh, all sorts of things, sending to... Uh, sending to side chains of um, plugins further down the line. Any way you want to send it, you can send it, basically. But let's say I want to send um, a headphone queue out of 15 and 16. And there we go. We've got send number two. And I can double click. I can select the volume if I want. I can, you know, change the balance. I can even move it around. So the um so the listener you know the artist can hear or not hear certain effects now that's something that harrison seems to have absolutely nailed in mixbus really cool if you weren't aware of that and you're a mixbus user this could change your uh, change your whole perspective number four extra buses so you know we've got these eight buses here that have tape saturation and a non-parametric three band eq um, you usually use them for sort of summing everything together to give it that kind of console-y sound. Uh, but what if you need some more buses? Well, this actually, when I first started using Mixbus, this confused me for a little bit. Uh, but if you just press Command-Shift-N on a Mac, um, I think it's probably Control-Shift-N on PC and Linux. Um, so Command-Shift-N and... This add tracks or buses section lets you add audio tracks, MIDI tracks or buses, and you can choose mono stereo buses. So I might want to add a New York City drum um, compression trick, uh, but not have it step on the drum buses that I'm already dealing with. Okay, so that was number four, adding extra buses. And you can add as many of those as you like. It's like any modern DAW. You know, it gives you the option of really customizing the mixer to uh, you know, however you want it to work. Number five, the monitor section. So if you haven't got it visible already, click on the Mon button on the master fader. And this brings up your control room monitor. Now I'm looking at my desk in front of me and I've got exactly that on the master fader channel. I've got control room monitor section, mute, dim, speaker, select, volume, and all sorts of inputs and, you know, um, uh, my uh, solo mode um, settings, etc. Well, it's very much the same on the um, Mixbus monitor section. We've got a dim. We can choose the dim settings. We've got monitor level. We can choose the settings from presets or we can manually tweak them. We can even send to different outputs. Um, and there's lots of settings for how solos are handled. However, what's really cool in Mixbus 3.1 this processes section was added and it lets us drop in plugins. For example, I've dropped in a really extreme <laughs> EQ, just as an example, because I don't use room correction, but if you used room correction, you would put it in here. So hopefully I'll suddenly become very trebly. 
um, because you're listening to my control room output. So I'll turn that off. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Um, so this, this basically our master fader goes to monitor and then we can add plugins to, you know, decide what we're listening to um, in the control room. So that's for control room, room correction, uh, essentially, you know, or whatever you want, really. But what will not happen is those won't be accidentally printed when you export audio. So, you know, gone are the days of having to turn off your room correction EQ curves on your master channel before you print or before you bounce the disc. Well, on to the final one, sidechain compression. Yeah, well, sidechain compression is handled in Mixbus really well anyway, within the plugins section. Uh, but there's another little sidechain feature in these compressors here. So um, on the Mixbus buses, um, you can select sidechain only on the buses, not on the channels. Um, so I put it on my bass bus. Uh, there's only one side chain on the desk, as it were, but it's quite useful because um, I just send from my kick drum track and I just have it so it ducks the bass down a little bit. So if you find a, a, a wide uh, channel, you can double click, click on the name to make it wide and you zoom in, uh, you'll see whether the channel is feeding the side chain because of the small red arrow. If the red arrow is highlighted, it's feeding the side chain. So hopefully you should have been able to hear there that when the kick comes in, it was ducking the bass a little bit. You can see that as well with the gain reduction. Um, I'm not sure how well the meters are picking up on the recording software for the screen record, but um, yeah, um, it just gives a little bit more space because the bass is obviously taking up a lot of low frequencies and we want to add that as a percussive element. Uh, we want some low frequencies on our kick as a percussive element. So that's six cool tips you can do on Mixbus. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you can take that to your projects if you're a Mixbus user or if you're um, you know, a user of another DAW, then you know, maybe you can use devs as some inspiration for things that you might want to work around on your DAW. Um, yeah, take that away. Hope you enjoy it. A happy recording. Uh, I will see you next time.